Hello and welcome to Puzzles Please. I'm Maddie and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Vermont Christmas Company. I'm going to be using this puzzle. It is Evening in Paris. The artwork is by David McLean. Vermont Christmas Company is a US puzzle company created in 1998 by Bill Flynn and Andrew Kelly and these days there are lots of puzzles on their website. They all tend to be quite traditional but certainly not just Christmas, they tend to be scenery and animals and so on. Um, on the website there are 30 different artists to have a look through and the puzzles come in 100 piece, 550 piece and 1000 piece puzzles. Let's start off with the puzzle box itself. It did come shrink wrapped which I've taken off because it creates too much glare for cameras. So it's a rectangular box. It's smaller than say the likes of Ravensburger or Schmidt. I will just quickly show you. Here is Ravensburger and there's Vermont. So yeah, a bit smaller there. The front of the box has the puzzle image. Vermont logo, puzzle title, Evening in Paris, this one, made in the USA, and 1000 piece puzzle. The back is completely plain, and then the sides, it has some writing in some different languages, uh, French and so on, and just sort of like the puzzle image again, and title, and tells us how large the puzzle is too, 30 by 24 inches, this one. It also says, Fully interlocking and randomly shaped pieces, always on thick quality board. Okay, let's open the box and have a look at those pieces. Okay, here we go. And here is our puzzle. No picture or leaflet, just a puzzle. A bit of a shame there's no picture I do I do quite like it when there's a puzzle picture separate to the box to look at reference to but at least we have got a nice clear image on the box there the box itself is a bit on the thin side not the strongest of boxes now to take a closer look at the puzzle pieces the bag is not resealable, but we can just tape it back up after we've, uh, after we've finished our puzzle. Oh, there we go. Okay, so straight away, wow, there is quite a lot of puzzle dust here. I don't know if you can see that, straight away. So this is a puzzle that... I might actually get the pieces and put them into a cylinder or something, give them a shake, get rid of the puzzle dust before I start properly puzzling. The puzzle pieces are mounted on a deep blue card backing there. And this is not the first Fairmont puzzle I've done. And you know, I really don't remember them having that deep blue last time, so I'm not sure if they have changed. I'm also straight away noticing these puzzle pieces are quite large. I'll show you in comparison to say a Schmidt puzzle. So this one here is our Schmidt puzzle piece and here's the Vermont. Yeah, quite a bit bigger. Next thing I am noticing is the puzzle piece shapes. They are a real mixture. We have got lots of these slightly uh, less common shapes, like sort of the star and the all in type pieces. And on top of that, a lot of the pieces have like a little bit of like a funky shape to them. I'll just show you a couple closer. Here are a couple of the puzzle pieces. And if you look, you can see quite a lot of them have like a slightly like funky cut off almost triangular uh, shape on the corners and edges of the puzzle pieces. I am quite liking these slightly funky puzzle piece shapes so I anticipate it's going to probably make the puzzle quite a lot easier. Okay I can see it's also a couple of pieces still slightly connected but not badly connected. I can pull those apart quite easily. <laughs> 
I say. There we go. <laughs> Other points about the puzzle pieces. Okay, so they have a shiny, slightly glossy finish to them. Paper seems well stuck down. Thickness of the pieces, reasonably thick. I don't think they're quite as thick as uh, Ravensburger or Schmidt, but not ultra thin. And yeah, they feel quite strong. So far, I'm pretty happy. I am going to do a quick puzzle sort. I, I don't think this puzzle is going to need much sorting, so just a quick puzzle sort and I'll be right back. Puzzle sorting is done and as I said before, puzzle dust, it doesn't really normally annoy me, but wow, that was a lot of dust. As for sorting, I just did a very quick sort, pulled out the most distinct colours. I have got the border and corners here, the red, blue sky, a bit of bright yellow there. Over here is the green foliage with flowers on, quite easy to pick out. And then a big box of random pieces. I'm not anticipating this puzzle to be too tricky or challenging. I hope anyway, we'll see. Um, okay, I think it's time to get puzzling. puzzle is now just over half complete. I began with the borders, then onto the yellow, greens, reds and blues that I pulled out from the puzzle pieces and I just love those autumnal reds and that blue sky with of course the famous iconic landmark. You can't have a puzzle of Paris without the Eiffel Tower. So far I found the pieces fit together nicely However, my only criticism would be is when you've got a couple of pieces together, if you try to lift them up, they just fall apart. I guess that's probably as they're a regular cut, so the interlocking is maybe not as tight. And I'm enjoying the sort of like slightly irregular cut. However, they're not like majorly irregular. We still all 
well all but one so far um have four inny out bits it's more just like the corners rather than like on a standard puzzle they have a more sort of sharp 90 degree corner these tend to be either wiggly corners or sort of concave or convex so if you did get a bit stuck you can still sort the pieces generally by their puzzle piece shape with the any outy bits to try and help i have found the puzzle to be really straightforward not challenging there is so much detail in the design so even like a big box of mixed pieces like so it is simple to go through and pull out the pieces you need and put them in place now having said that i think it's probably time i get on complete the puzzle and come back at the end Here is Evening in Paris, all completed. And I've got to say, the printing is very good. There's a lot of detail in this puzzle design as it is original artwork and you can see it all very nice and clearly. The last puzzle I did of Paris on the channel was one by Gallison, the artwork by Michael Storrings, and it was very different. It was very lively and vibrant, whereas this one is much more mellow and romantic. I think my favourite part of the puzzle has got to be the carousel just there at the front. I've got to say, I don't think I've ever seen Paris this quiet, but I do really like the artwork. Going back to the puzzle quality and brand, one thing I noticed of this puzzle, it has these like little rounded corners instead of the standard quite sharp corners you get in most puzzles, and I quite like that. The puzzle pieces themselves are a bit larger than a standard puzzle piece, say of Ravensburger, which means the whole size of the puzzle is a bit larger. It measures 30 inches by 24 inches, so a bit bigger, which I don't know, could be a problem if you're using a puzzle board, let's say. Otherwise, the puzzle pieces were pretty good. Um, the cut, very good. Thickness, decent and nice and strong, but the annoying bit for me was how they interlock, how they connect. If you've got a few of them together, you just can't pick them up. They will fall apart. Now the puzzle is complete. And you see in a few of my videos, I kind of like picking my puzzles up. There's, uh, yeah, no, this one, if I try, I will have pieces everywhere. So yeah, the sort of tightness, closeness, interlocking of the pieces is not that snug on this puzzle. Fairmont puzzles retail at about $17 in the US. That is for a 1,000 piece puzzle, I should add, and around 12, 13 pounds in the UK. Uh, I will add links just under the video in the description if you'd like to take a look at them. Uh, well, it's a little bit harder to get hold of them in the UK though, with them being manufactured in the US. So Fairmont, they're not too expensive, they're not cheap, but they're not budget either. So I've tried to review the puzzle, taking that in mind, thinking of other puzzle companies that charge around the same price. And so my overall verdict of Fairmont, they are quite good. But for me, I think there are other puzzle companies charging around the same that maybe I prefer. The cut of the pieces, I quite liked that, the slightly irregular, but I didn't like how you can't move the pieces when they're connected. So overall, they are good. Would I do another Vermont puzzle? Yeah, I would, but I probably won't go out my way to look for one either. If I see one that I really like, I will go for it though. Do let me know in the comments what you think of Vermont or if you would try Vermont in the future. Thank you very much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, happy puzzling.